Good afternoon guys and welcome back to the Hicks Hooks channel. Today I'm going to teach you guys how I took my Winona canoe and turned it into a fishing machine. Alright, the first thing I'm going to start with is the transom. For the transom, all I did is I took a piece of pressure treated wood and a piece of angle iron. All right, took my angle iron first, screwed some holes in it so that I could connect my two by four to it. And then I had to screw some holes downward through it where this brace connected the canoe. All right, so first you're gonna remove that piece of wood down here. I replaced mine with a piece of teak, but you can just replace it with a piece of pine that it came with. So I removed this, I had to get some longer bolts that were actually gonna connect the angle iron through the plastic and through this piece of wood. All right, and then you wanna put some nuts on the bottom so you can really secure that and keep it tight. Um, you could probably use the same nuts that it came with. All right, once I got that angle iron on here, I got my two by four and I made sure I drilled the holes right where my uh, wing nuts are here and my bolts. That secures these two together. Then I used two hanger bolts right here, all right, and I anchored those in. These act as my terminals. So with these, I put a washer underneath and I have my wires. My wires, all I used was a pair of old bumper cables, okay? I cut the clips off them. I bought some new terminal connectors on there and I cinched those on, okay? So I keep these on here all day long and then I got some new nuts to keep on top. So all I'm gonna do when I hook up my trolling motor is I'm gonna hook my red and my black here, cords, I'm gonna sink these down and then these connect the battery. The reason I use bumper cables is so I can run it all the way to the middle of my canoe so that I'm not sitting here super heavy in the back, especially if I'm fishing alone. So my bumper cables, they run all the way from here, underneath to the middle. You can zip tie them down if you want. Um, but basically what you're gonna do is kind of wrap it around this middle brace and that way you kind of have a good secure spot for your battery in here. I put my battery box in there, and I secure, secure my uh, terminals to that, and I'm running power all the way back to that trolling motor, and it, it really is nice and out of the way. What I've done here is I made this little contraption. I took two flagpole holders. I saw some other guy on YouTube. I think he made the War Eagle canoe stabilizers, so I've kind of made mine a little similar to his, but with a different material. Um, I like these flagpole holders because you can adjust them to the height. So depending on how long your stabilizer arms are or how short they are, you know, it really depends on the angle that you have those and these things are adjustable. All right, the next thing I'm gonna take you through is my stabilizer arms. And in fact, I got some material to build some new ones. I've had the other ones for about five years. So I figured great, great opportunity to make some new ones and keep this boat going. So here we go. Canoe stabilizers, cheap and easy style. All right. First thing you're gonna want for these stabilizer arms is you're gonna to wanna to buy the materials, okay? So, the materials are gonna be about eight feet of PVC, all right? That's gonna be all the material for your extension arm, so that's eight foot for each one. So if you're building two arms, you're gonna to wanna to have two pieces of eight foot PVC. All right, here's your diagram for each arm. Okay? The length is gonna be 42 inches, which is three and a half feet. That's gonna go from the middle of your canoe out outside to the water. You're gonna have your 45 bend. That was 99 cents from the hardware store. And then you have 18 more inches of this PVC down here, which is connect to your T, all right? That was 50 cents from the hardware store. And then you're gonna want two pieces of 15 inch that are gonna to connect to that T. That's gonna hold your noodle, all right? To connect all the PVC together, you can either use the primer and the glue, which is two cans, or you can use this just, you know, wet PVC cement. Um, that was $4 from the hardware store, so all together for each arm, $5 for the PVC, $0.50, cents, $1, and $4, so that's ten fifty for the arms. Um, to connect your PVC arm to the flagpole holder, you're going to want to get a piece of dowel that's gonna fit snugly inside of that PVC. I'll show you that more at the end of this video. <clears throat> All right, 
Um, I got some hardware clips. These are gonna connect my PVC to the dowel rod. I kind of splurged on these at 250 a pop, but I thought they looked good, and you know, a little brass bling for my boat never hurt. The tools you're gonna want. Oh, I'm sorry, the last thing that's super important. All right, your flagpole holders. This is probably the most expensive part of the whole project, but it's vital. I mean, you just wanna have something nice that you're gonna be able to adjust. These are about $15 each at the hardware store, but they last forever, and uh, I use a piece of scrap. Um, that's just plywood. Subflooring, I think I used for this, but you can just use any sort of piece of plywood. Uh, I believe this is about half an inch. All right, the tools you're gonna wanna need, measuring tape, some sort of saw. I'm gonna use my reciprocating saw. If you're gonna use a reciprocating saw, I recommend using a, uh, a metal bit instead of a wood bit. The wood bit tends to jag and kind of really rock that PVC as you're cutting it. Um, all right, so here we go. I'm gonna start cutting these, I'll measure, I'll cut, and then I'll glue them together, and then uh, we'll pop the noodles on, and I'll show you how we put it onto the canoe. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna measure long first. So I'm gonna start with my longest piece, three and a half feet. You don't have to worry about this cut being super square because it's just gonna go inside of that 45 inch joint or hold it next to the flagpole. Boom, butter. All right, next piece going to be my 18 inch piece. All right, now you can kind of take some sandpaper to this if you want, kind of uh, scuff it up a little bit, smooth it down. That'll make it fit a little bit better in there. This nice little ball here. All right, so we're gonna get our pieces ready. So I've got my two 15 inches, I've got my 18 inch, and I'm gonna start with my three feet. So I like the smooth end to be close to the flagpole holder, so the end I cut, I'm gonna stick it in this 45 inch piece. Take this, you just put a little bit of a ring around the outside. All right, if you want, you can put a little ring on the inside of this. Never hurts. We're gonna slide that on. Make it nice and tight. All right, then we're gonna take our 18 inch piece and do the same thing. Try to take, you know, these are both pretty flat, so they look good to me. Get another little piece on here. Just put a nice little ring around the outside. All right. You can get a little bit on the inside of here, just give it a little extra. And then you just slide it on in. All right, here we go. All right, so now I'm gonna connect my T. All right, you can see it right down here. I'm gonna connect my T to this piece. I'm gonna really, this takes about five minutes to so get it down. And the reciprocating saw really saves a lot of time. So you have one, I say use that instead of a hacksaw. All right, I'm gonna to want to look at that. I'm gonna make sure it's about square as can be. two fifteens, okay? So with this, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna get my 
insert my joint first. All right, this is a really simple project. Talk about DIY for the first time. I mean, this will help out your canoe and just make you feel pretty cool. I love building PVC stuff. <clears throat> All right, and that right there is my arm. All right. And though it may not look that straight and sturdy, I mean, this PVC is awesome. It's very light, so you're not packing heavy stuff in your canoe. And the flex this gives just really makes it, you know, super awesome, I think. That's what makes this, this arm stand out about all the other ones. All right. Then you want to get your noodle. All right. So... One noodle, if you cut it down to the fourth, they're gonna break it down to about 15 inches each. All right, and these guys, they're just gonna slide right on here. Now, if you want, I don't like gluing them. Instead, what I like to do, I like to take a, just a little nut and bolt right here, and I'm gonna screw holes down on the inside, on the outside of these arms, and that's just gonna keep them on. The reason I like doing that is because I like to change out my noodle every season. They're in the water, you know, they get algae, they just kind of get messed up a little bit. So if you're just replacing this for $2 every season, that's pretty cheap in my book. Okay. So I got my stabilizer arm here. All right, and what's gonna connect this to the inside of my uh, flagpole is this dowel rod right here. So. You can see I'm just going to slide this in, all right, and this is about three feet, so the idea is I'm going to get it in there far enough where I give it a little bit of extra support, all right, and then I'm going to leave a little bit outside so that I have enough for my flagpole holder. So the flagpole holder holds down to there. So I'm going to mark where it holds to, and I'm sure all these flag will hold it a little bit different, so I'm going to mark where it holds to, and then I know that the outside of this, however long I cut it, is going to come to right where that line is, and I'm going to have a nice snug fitting into my flagpole. So I'm going to line right there, I'm going to cut to about right here, alright, and now, that is gonna fit right in here. All right, so I'm gonna go right in here. Oh yeah, that's gonna be nice and snug there. And that. Right there, I'm gonna hold my uh, my dowel in there, nice and sturdy. All right, that's not gonna move. And then we're gonna put that on there, and this fit in here. We'll adjust it, tighten it. Now I've got my my extension arm right there. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna go put it on the canoe, um, put it all together, and, you know, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more. All right, so we got the whole extension arm all fixed up and ready to go. All right, we got our dowel secured in there with our pin. Now we're just gonna put it right on here. All right, I secure my flagpole holders on with a bolt and a wing nut. So I'll show you. The reason I like this channel bolt right here is because when you sink it in there, they're nice and flat. So you're not gonna catch any line on there like you're fly casting. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my pole, stick it in here, and then cinch it down. And I've got some nice, cheap, and easy stabilizer arms right there. And there you go, the cheap and easy stabilizer arm. And that right there is my canoe setup. So if you're looking to do some stabilizer arms, cheap and easy, keep you from falling in the water, keep your battery and your motor dry, I suggest is the best way to do it. Thanks for tuning in to the Hicks Hooks channel. And remember, don't forget to subscribe. Tight line, guys. See you on the water. Happy 4th of July.